is the big picture, an official television report of the United States Army, produced for the armed forces and the American people. Now, to show you part of the big picture, here is Master Sergeant Stuart Quayne. How does the United States find and train men of leadership ability on whom the nation can depend in time of mobilization? Many of our officers come from ROTC, the Reserve Officers Training Corps, which is a part of the curriculum of many schools and colleges throughout the country. Here at Cornell University, in this huge armory given over to ROTC, many thousands of college students have undergone training leading to a commission in the United States Army. Today, the big picture tells the story of one of these men, a former student in ROTC. This is Kenneth Miller, Cornell 54. Hut one, hut two, hut three. Given an opportunity, he knows how to make the most of it. Not a sensational member of the team, but capable, dependable. That was yesterday. Today, it's Lieutenant Kenneth Miller, Missile Man, 3rd U.S. Army Missile Command, Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Lieutenant Miller is a member of another team now, and a leader on that team. Its aim, the defense of the United States. Knowing about the Honest John rocket, its mechanics, its potential as an atomic weapon, its use as a tactical weapon, being able to supervise the countless details of preparation for firing efficiently with on the second timing. This is just part of the demanding job Lieutenant Miller now holds. The smoothness, the speed, the unity of his team's performance is Lieutenant Miller's responsibility. With a rocket about to be fired, he remains alert to the slightest possibility of error. Ten, niner, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero, fire! The work of this unit Firing an Honest John rocket, preparing to move quickly to new locations to be ready to fire again, is supervised by men whose self-confidence, poise, and decisiveness have been developed through long training. This training began early, several years ago, when Kenneth Miller was a freshman student at Cornell University. College is a place of traditions, of cherished landmarks and customs. Here at Cornell is the statue to the founder of the university, Ezra Cornell. All paths seem to lead here, a meeting place, sometimes for those who have never met before. And here at Cornell since the year 1868, there has existed a course of military instruction for young men enrolled in the university and a tradition of high standards of service. The first day at Barton Hall, the building given over to ROTC training, one couldn't help but be impressed at its vast cavernous interior, almost two acres of unobstructed floor. At Cornell, students must register for courses in military training during their first two years. Name? Miller, Kenneth. You're scheduled for ROTC on Monday and Wednesday at 9 o'clock. Drill on Thursday at 2 o'clock. No class cuts are authorized. Any unexcused absences may have to be explained to PMS and T. The PMS and T the professor of military science and tactics. In his address of welcome, he called attention to the responsibilities of college men in a country dedicated to freedom. I believe 
that no man of character will allow himself to remain unsuited for the best possible use of his talents in behalf of this essential task. Our course is aimed to develop your talent for leadership. I hope that you will not try to get by or simply do well. I hope you will give your best. Gentlemen, that is all for today. You are dismissed. Soon school was in full swing. Ken's schedule was crowded with subjects that would require many hours of concentration in class and at his desk. Here on campus was the helter-skelter movement of individuals, in a sense symbolic of the freedom of individuals to follow their own desires as much as possible. And here too, close by, was another type of movement, concerted, unified, a group of men training to move as one, a kind of action which free men must demonstrate if they are to remain free. ROTC was an island of discipline on the campus. Without such discipline, the pursuit of free inquiry, hallmark of the academic life, could not exist. This movement, in the first days of training, was not particularly coordinated. There was nothing difficult about drill, yet it was basic in military instruction, a means by which men could learn instinctive response to commands. Another aspect of ROTC training in freshman year was individual weapons and marksmanship. Ken had always been interested in guns. The confusion of parts of the stripped-down M1 rifle was a puzzle that challenged him, and it wasn't long before he became adept in assembling the parts accurately. Down below Barton Hall was a rifle range where students could practice marksmanship using 22 caliber rifles. Although this provided the fun of a shooting gallery, careful instruction went into it too, particularly how to squeeze rather than pull the trigger. ROTC students whose scores were high were encouraged to go out for the Army ROTC rifle team, which competes in national intercollegiate competitions. Another freshman course, American Military History, provided an understanding of past wars and battles. In all ROTC classes, students are expected to extend the traditional military courtesies. Sir, Cadet Miller, were Washington's men as well trained as the Hessians? Or was it surprise that won the battle? Actually, the affair in Trenton was more surprise than it was a battle. There were very few casualties, and the fighting lasted but only an hour. The Hessians were at a strict disadvantage because they had been trained in volley-to-volley -volley combat. You know, that is where one side lines up, firing against another side, boom, boom, it's a, it's a typical fighting action of the 18th century. The first year was a full one. Having been something of a football star in high school, Ken tried out for the college team. And made it. There was also a job to help meet expenses. And one day, the beginning of another extracurricular interest she was signing up for a magazine subscription. He had seen her before, but didn't know her name. Now it was right in front of him, along with her phone number. Excuse me, lad, may I borrow your pencil for this brief but vital note for my records? So, when I saw that you read the same magazine that I read, I figured we had something in common and ought to get together sometime. It doesn't seem to me like a very good reason to get together. Anyway, I'm busy today. Well, if you can't make today, how about tomorrow? Well, 
If you're the fellow Marge told me about, I suppose I could. Swell. Tell you what, I'll uh, I'll meet you in front of Ezra Carnell. Uh, I'll wear a red jacket and my freshman cap. For a while, it looked as if she might not show up. And then for a while, it looked as if he might not look up. Right from the beginning, they seemed to hit it off really well. Ken's freshman schedule became more crowded than ever. Second year ROTC. Heavier weapons, requiring a crew of men, and thus teamwork. Also gunnery practice. Fire is brought to bear upon the enemy's position on the puff table. Drop five zero. Fire perfect. Cease fire. End of mission. Target destroyed. The eyes of the student become more expert in seeing, in observing, in using the materials that help him to get his bearings, as well as aid him in determining where the enemy might be. Maps, topographic and otherwise, are interpreted and understood. Also continuing into the second year, the course known as School of the Soldier and Exercise of Command. Advanced students supervise. These men feel a sense of responsibility about the Corps and those who may become its future members. They are watchful to find among the basic students men who show developing leadership and who might be recommended for the advanced course. Cadet Miller, drill the platoon. Yes, sir. Cadet Miller, front and center. Drill the platoon. Yes, sir. Two, lip, pace. As you were. Two, ten, hut. Lift, face. Forward. Perch. To the rear. Perch. To the rear. Perch. He's drilling the platoon. That's Miller. He's sophomore. Looks like a pretty good man. To the rear. Perch. Tune. Hope. Toward the end of his sophomore year, Ken received a form to be filled out by those applying for the advanced course. There was plenty of midnight oil to be burned that night, a report to finish, and a test to be ready for on the following morning. The full schedule was getting him down a bit. The application form, which would bring an even fuller program next year, became hidden under a pile of books and papers. And then one day, he was asked to drop in at the office of his military advisor. Sir, I've been directed to report to you. Have a seat, Mr. Miller. Thank you, sir. Ken, we've gone over your records. And they indicate that you're a pretty good man. In fact, the academic board has recommended you for the advanced course. But I understand you don't want it. Well, not exactly, sir. I'm going to have a pretty heavy schedule next year even without ROTC. Actually, there are only two more hours involved. Yes, sir, I know. But with my other subjects, football and everything else, I went pretty jammed up. That is a problem. Is football going to take more time next year than it has this year? Yes, sir, I believe it will. Ken, you're the one who has the decision to make. I'm sure you know my attitude in this matter. If you want to do it, you will. You're the type of young man who will manage if you really want to go ahead for a commission. 
Can you have the potential? Take As Ken left well. the office, and for the next few days, the problem kept coming to mind. It was something he could talk over with others. And you know what it also means? What? Active duty after I graduate. Maybe overseas. What's wrong with that? Joe, it's about that time. Get with you in a moment. But having discussed the question thoroughly, it was still for him to decide. What were the real factors to be considered? Was it the pressure of time, a program next year that would have him running faster and faster to catch up with a packed schedule of classwork, studying, the job and football? Or was there a deeper question which he had not truly faced? How he felt about becoming a leader in the armed forces, a role that had been accepted by others, men whom he had admired, men who had shown themselves capable and willing to accept the responsibility. These other men had responded. He had not. For Ken, the decision began to form. Gradually, he began to place himself in a picture in which he belonged. And deep down, there was something else making Ken decide to take the advanced course. The word patriotism hadn't occurred to him, but the feeling was there, basic to his decision. In his junior year at Cornell, Ken was an advanced ROTC student. Now the work was more serious, and thrust into a position of leadership, there were more responsibilities. All right, Miller, these are your men. I want you to make them the best platoon in the regiment. Yes, sir. His career as a leader had begun. Practice in leadership extended to the classroom, where as a future officer, Ken would be called upon to teach his troops. Now, if your weapon fails to fire, pull the operating rod handle all the way to the rear with your right hand, palm up. Then release it, aim, and fire. This will clear stoppages in most cases. If it fails to correct the stoppage and it's necessary for you to continue firing, then operate the operating rod handle by hand until you have time to investigate the trouble. Are there any questions? After junior year, summer camp, transportation, uniforms, rations, all supplied by the government. And the pay is at the rate of $78 a month. Summer camp provided the first real experience of an army day from dawn to dusk. A program of intensive practical military training began. Classrooms were no longer the focus of their activity. For six weeks, it was to be the real thing. The marches grew longer and harder. The toughening up process would have no let up from now on. All the routines of army life in the field became suddenly familiar to these college students. Quite soon they were old hands, old timers, at home in their bivouac. And quite soon, most interested in the institution known as CHOW. This was training designed for college men. A concentrated laboratory course in which the test was how well each man stood up under the stress and strain of simulated combat. The work in the field became more and more realistic. tactical conditions, a new kind of talent emerged. The ability to think quickly, to move rapidly, skillfully. Summer camp gave new meaning to the word soldier. Also, at no previous time had there been such a clear opportunity 
to judge Ken's leadership potential. The days went swiftly by, but before summer camp was over, a type of military training was suggested to Ken, which he thought interesting and exciting. It wasn't possible in the crowded schedule to do more than glimpse one of the rockets at Fort Bragg. But it was enough to start him thinking of the tremendous changes that the future would surely bring. In the Army, more than elsewhere, one was brought into close contact with new developments and was in a better position to sense things to come. He wondered whether someday he would get to know something about rocketry. In this era, when space was constantly being discussed, Ken was more than interested. Guided missile training. When the time came, perhaps he would take it. Tyson Review! Summer camp came to a close with a formal parade and review. these men from colleges all over the country, this had been more than a period of instruction. Living together, being in the field with one another, learning the give and take of military life, this had been a maturing experience that could not have come from the classrooms to which they would soon return. Now it was the fourth and last year of ROTC. Among the responsibilities of upperclassmen, is participation in cadet boards, which decide questions of discipline arising within the Corps. Now, I see it this way. We've had to give this man eight demerits in the past month. Obviously, he just doesn't seem to care. I think we should deny his appeal. I don't agree. I don't think we ought to judge this man in his past performance, which has no relation to this case. The cadet says this particular lateness couldn't be helped, and it's up to us to decide whether or not his excuse is a legitimate one. To reach a decision calmly and justly, this is an essential task of a troop commander. With his talent for feeling out a problem and reaching a good common sense conclusion, Ken grew in stature in his last year of ROTC. Overlapped at times. Why don't you see Colonel Moore? Let's talk to him about it. I'm sure he can figure something out. OK? Thank you, sir. Sir, I've been directed to report to you to explain the two demerits I received for unkempt appearance at the inspection this afternoon. Before you go any further, this uniform doesn't fit you very well. Let's get down to the supply room and see if they can't fix you up. Did you do a grow this summer? Yes, sir, I did. At the military ball during his senior year, Ken was there with his best girl. In fact, the girl. The announcement of the engagement, planned as a very formal speech with carefully chosen words, was a surprise to no one. The big question was, how soon were they going to be married? They couldn't say exactly when, but more important in Ken's future, and his wife's too, was the decision he had made to become an officer. Graduation came at last. After it, cap and gown were removed to attend a special ceremony in which each qualifying ROTC graduate received his commission as a second lieutenant. Gentlemen, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, I, I Kenneth Miller, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States, and that I will well and faithfully, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office, discharge the duties of the office upon which I am about to enter, upon which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. After graduation, this is what happened to Lieutenant Kenneth Miller. 
a period of training during which Ken requested duty overseas. Marriage to the girl he met in college. Shortly after, he received his assignment, duty in Germany. Here indeed was a place to spend the honeymoon that had been postponed. During his overseas tour, he and his wife were able to visit Rome. They became ardent tourists. Paris, of course, was on the agenda. And there was skiing in Switzerland. Back in the States, Ken was assigned to duty with the 3rd U.S. Army Missile Command at Fort Bragg. Meanwhile, the family had begun to grow. Pam, his first girl, born in an army hospital and a real healthy youngster. Today, Pam has grown up and has been followed by Kathy. At Fort Bragg, First Lieutenant Miller and his wife live in a pleasant little home quite near their many friends. Good friends, such as Lieutenant Guy Bedrosian, another former Cornell ROTC man who captained the football team at Cornell and now coaches the Fort Bragg 11. Whether Ken will return to civilian life after his period of active duty, or whether he will remain for another period of service in the Army, he has already gained much from his experience in ROTC, and his country has gained as well. Without men trained as he has been, the United States would lose an advantage impossible to measure. Having capable military leaders for whatever eventualities may arise in the troubled world of today. America continues to require a hard core of reserve officers to keep itself strong. Organizations such as the ROTC offer opportunities for men with leadership abilities to become officers, to help themselves for whatever future they plan, and as citizens to serve their country to the best of their ability. Now this is Sergeant Stuart Queen, your host for The Big Picture. The Big Picture is an official television report for the armed forces and the American people. Produced by the Army Pictorial Center. Presented by the United States Army in cooperation with this station.